Good Sunday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with your Sunday evening edition of Weather Overtime. This is our online video weather blog, keeping you updated as to what's going on with the forecast. And as of right now, things are relatively quiet, but unfortunately, as we go into the course of the next couple of days, we'll be seeing more chances of showers and thunderstorms out there. And also, again, the possibility of some maybe some problems toward about Friday night football next week. We'll take a look at the seven the 10 day forecast coming up. If you can't stick around for the whole netcast, red bar at the bottom of your screen, that's your forecast for the Mid South scrolling on by there. You can also catch our 7 to 10 day forecast here at wreg.com slash weather for more information about what's going on in the Mid South area. Questions, concerns, ideas about what you might like to see on here, please drop me an email at austin.onic at wreg.com. And coming up in just a little bit, we got a lot to talk about for tonight. Again, fairly quiet here in the Mid South area, but we'll also be seeing again that potential for more chances of showers and thunderstorms later on. Tropics are getting very active at this time, and we'll talk more about that. Plus, a team of meteorologists and scientists are actually going towards where Hurricane Florence may be making landfall, and they're in Memphis for tonight. We'll tell you more about what they're planning on doing in just the next few minutes, so stick around for more on that. Got any co uh, comments about the weather, what's going on in your area? Drop your city, state, location into the comments section and give us some temperatures, some rainfall amounts, sky conditions, high temperature, low temperature. Let's do some amateur meteorology and I'll call some of those out on camera as I see them passing on by the screen. Welcome to everybody and thanks for tuning in for tonight. Again, for the rest of the evening, we should be looking at some pretty cool numbers heading into very early tomorrow morning. Kids at the bus stop might need a jacket in parts of the Mid-South with temperatures dropping by early tomorrow morning into the lower to mid 60s. So we've got some decently cool numbers heading our direction into and around the area. Nick Cook, uh, no polygons tonight. No, doesn't look like it for right now. So looking pretty quiet for the uh, time being. Rose M.K. Witham Smith, glad you like the rainfall out there. Ronnie Williams, 68 degrees in Collierville. Thank you very much for checking in on that one. Avery Nellum drizzled a little bit earlier. Thank you very much uh, for that one, Joan Pyrdom, Pyrdom, hope I'm saying that right, uh, turn the air conditioning off. That's a nice feeling to have right there. Tiffany Kern, thanks for joining us uh, for tonight, and everybody else who's checking in from around the area for the time being. Uh, Monique, not exactly a solid tie. It's more of a Doctor Who reference right there, but uh, at least from here you can't see that on air, so that's why I wear that for the fairly calm and non-striking tie right there. Scott Jarvis, 76, Banner, Mississippi. Humidity 96%, winds out of the northwest. Thank you very much for that report for tonight. Beautiful night. Beth Blackwell Cross, 67 degrees. Thank you guys very much for all that. Official high temperature today, 74 in Memphis. 87 is our normal high temperature. Pretty spot on for the low, but we haven't dropped all that way just yet. We might drop lower than this that was set at about daybreak for this morning. Precipitation, we wound up with just about an inch of rainfall or so, and we're back up to nearly nine inches is ahead of normal for the year, so doing very well on rainfall, and for the month, just about three inches. Most of that picked up in the last couple of days. Looking back towards Shelby Farms Park, some sky shine taking place as the lights from Memphis reflect off the underside of that cloud deck. Hyde Lake, and not too many people out and about for this evening, a little bit on the cool and decently quiet side. No construction going on into and around I-240 and Poplar for tonight from our Hilton East Memphis camera. No construction, so all lanes are open at this point in time. Still a lot of construction equipment around as Memfix 4 from TDOT has a long way to go, but at least things are moving along for this weekend out there. We've ramped up the sensitivity to see if there's anything coming our way on Storm Tracker 3S. There's been a few drizzles making their way on through. The heaviest rainfall by far is over portions of northeast Mississippi. A few sprinkles from around Alcorn, Tishomingo counties, down to just to the east and south of Oxford for tonight. But once that clears the area, that should be it for the rainfall across much of the Mid-South. Showers and thunderstorms, some heavier rainfall down around Starkville, Columbus in Mississippi, and going across into portions of west central Alabama for tonight. Plenty of moisture in place. What's left of Gordon? The tropical depression, former tropical depression, is now 
now way up to our northeast, but also dragging down some cooler air. So that's helping to keep things a little bit more palatable out there for tonight out across much of the area. So again, decently cool out across much of the Mid-South for the time being. Temperatures right now, again, dropping close to our low temperatures from this morning back in the mid to upper 60s and another round of decent rainfall for today nearly an inch and a half at North Point Christian School in South Haven. This is on top of those two to four inches of rain we picked up yesterday. So some parts of the Mid-South easily picking up three to five inches in the last 48 hours. So a decent soaking out there to help clear out the air a little bit and also help the wildfire danger by just a little bit anyway across much of the area. Alan Bogard from Corpus Christi. Welcome. That's a far, far piece from around the area, but thanks for checking on in. Grady Bennett, comfortable 68.1, two and a half inches of rain from the gauge in Berclair. Thank you very much uh, for that one right now. Andy Drew Montgomery, what is the dew point in Redmond, Washington right now? Good question. Don't know. I'll see if I can look that up by the end of the show, but thanks for asking about that. Rest of the evening, again, a few sprinkles passing on through, but beyond that, we should see an end of the rain coming up around midnight and afterwards. And then tomorrow morning, again, parts of the Mid-South, by the time the kids hit the school bus stop back in the lower 60s, could be even north of I-40, some temperatures back in the upper 50s. So that jacket might come in very handy tomorrow out there right about rush hour Monday. Rest of the day looks good. Temperatures in the mid to upper 70s out across much of the area and looking at numbers again pretty close to normal over the next several days but at least we've got some very mild conditions out there for right now barbara broadway hope the temperatures stay uh yeah would love to say that but not really going to be happening at this point in time so not too bad there andy drew montgomery no idea who todd is but thank you very much for checking on through for tonight and madison Mueller, glad you're excited about the rainfall because we'll have some more of that coming up a little bit later on mostly cloudy for monday again we're not expecting anything in the way of showers out there for tomorrow clouds at times mixed in with the rainfall but that's going to be about all that we see out there. Also seeing, again, some chances of showers and thunderstorms coming our way as we get into Tuesday. Not great chances. Again, about 20% coverage chance, but that's about it. Uh, Brian Rhodes, welcome from New Hampshire. Thanks for checking in uh, for this evening and everybody else checking in across the area for tonight on live real-time weather overtime for tonight. Heading into the next several days, temperatures begin that stair step upwards into the mid-80s, and there will be that chance of an isolated shower or thunder storm every single day very close to normal by week's end and into next weekend with some isolated showers and thunderstorms could be a problem for Friday night football and could be maybe a problem for again around the athletic events for next Saturday. The Southern Heritage Classic rained out, stormed out last night and the officials making a very wise decision to curtail the activities for public safety last night. A lot of people not happy about the game being postponed and then canceled but that was an exceptionally wise and safe decision by the authorities out there by the officials at the game very good idea to make certain everybody stays safe and it's very difficult to make certain that thousands of people get protected underneath the stadium when there's severe weather around so something again that was a very good call across much of the area into and around the air for area last night 71 in eureka springs april hence thank you very much uh, for that one in coming into the area. Appreciate that and everybody else who's checking in. Next weekend into next week, midpoint of September, temperatures back in the mid-80s, just below normal for this time of the year. So looking pretty stable on the numbers, not too huge numbers up or down. No heat waves, so that's good news. And temperatures for the next couple of days, at least we're going to be seeing some fairly moderate activities for right now. All right, big story, of course, is the tropics. Tomorrow is the midpoint of the hurricane season. It started on June 1st. It goes until December 1st, and September 10th is the midpoint. This is the midpoint area right between all those months that we spend out there. And a new storm on the National Hurricane Center's website, keeping an eye on a disturbance. It's a tropical wave passing through the Western Caribbean, Cuba right through there, 
Yucatan Peninsula and Nicaragua down here. And again, the storm is just kind of rotating around. There is some precedence that if the storm moves northward through this gap between West Cuba and Southeast Mexico, that this could become a very strong storm, especially with the very warm waters of the eastern Gulf up there. So this bears watching if you're heading down toward Florida or the Gulf Coast in the next several days. We'll talk about Florence in just a little bit. That's a new hurricane. Helene, just off the west coast is a new hurricane category one winds at 75 miles per hour Isaac, not quite there yet. The I named storm, 70 miles per hour, has to get over 74 miles per hour to see if there's, again, any winds out there like that. No indication that they're going to be sending a Hurricane Hunter plane to check these storms out yet, but again, definitely bears watching. Both of these storms appear to be taking more of a westerly track at this time. It looks like Helene may be spinning northward up between uh, Iceland and Bermuda, so hopefully Helene is not that much of a problem. Isaac on the long-range forecast is showing some potential of heading toward the Caribbean and possibly not definitely, but possibly into the Gulf of Mexico. So that's something we need to watch, and looks like it's going to be diminishing from a Category 2, possibly back to a tropical storm as we go toward the end of next week. Of course, the big weather story for tonight is Florence. It encountered some dry air and a little bit more shear in the Atlantic, so it did a pretty good job of weakening back to a tropical storm this weekend. Now it's moving over some warmer waters. It's getting a lot more moisture, and the conditions are a lot more favorable for this thing to scoot right along back toward the southeast United States coast. This is the forecast for right now. And again, looking for the potential of this storm to get closer over the course of the next several days. Now, a hurricane, just a regular hurricane, is just Category 1, Category 2. That's what it'll be through about tomorrow. Major hurricane status is when we hit Category 3. That's winds of 125 miles per hour plus, And that is where we start looking at some very good possibilities of catastrophic damage. It looks like right now... This storm is going to be making its way back to the northwest very steadily as a Category 4. So we're talking about winds just below Category 5 of 150 miles per hour just to the southeast of the United States as we get into Wednesday afternoon and evening. Then as we go toward around the area of Friday afternoon, that is where, let me see, not getting, I have to... do this the old-fashioned way here. Sorry about that. The storm itself is again heading its way. It's looking like it's going to be going toward about the area around the Carolinas, and that, again, is fairly good news for anybody north or south of that. Now, keep in mind that this storm can go anywhere within this white boundary. This line right here is just the average of all of that. So, again, anything south of Chesapeake Bay, and I would say anything north of Jacksonville and even down toward Orlando, Florida, if you're planning on traveling anywhere in that location in the next few days, I would strongly recommend consider or be very flexible. You don't want to be going into a situation where you're just going to have to turn around and get back out of in the next few days. This is a dangerous storm. Now again, this path will change in the next few days, so it's important. It is critical to make certain that you pay attention to what is going on with these storms into the area. Andy, Drew, Montgomery, uh, check your pockets or your desk. That's probably where your car keys are, just to be on the safe side. That's the last place I left mine out there. Anyway, for the next couple of days, we'll be looking for this this storm to possibly affect this area. There is some possibility, according to some of the computer models, that this storm may stall offshore and the path of the storm might loop the loop and then head back up the east coast. Now, that's just a couple of possibilities right there, but ones that need to be considered because if this thing sits here shoveling tons of moisture on shore, we could see not inches of rainfall, but feet, and that could really increase the problem of flooding on top of the storm surge that is heading on through here and the waves. We're already seeing waves on the east coast that are huge and going to be getting even larger into the course of the next several days. Andy Drew Montgomery, uh, no, I was born in Colorado Springs, but thank you for asking. And it's uh, Austin, Texas is spelled with an I, by the way, so just watch your spelling on that. Rest of the forecast, again, could be causing a lot of problems here with, again, the chances of rainfall moving on through. That, again, is going to be one of the major killers from this storm. So this is something to really watch out for. 
So if you're planning again traveling anywhere south of Richmond or DC or north of Florida and around, say, Savannah, that's the area to watch out for as this storm continues to make its way back that general direction. We'll be watching that very carefully uh, into and around the area, so we could see a lot of problems with that on the east coast. Not quite for us here into and around the area for right now, so pretty qu quiet for the time being. Uh, ben Mount, what are the water temperatures and will it have an effect on weakening the storm? It doesn't really look like it right now because if you take a look between where the storm is right now, the sea surface temperatures are the orange and red colors right here. So the numbers are decently warm at this point and will continue to be so. So that's going to help this thing to grow into the next couple of days. The only thing that is really going to slow this thing down is that if it actually makes landfall, uh, once this thing hits land, it loses about 50% of its power. So that's again where we're going to be seeing the best possibility out there for slowing it down. But that is a major storm coming on through there, 150 miles per hour winds. That's not good news for that particular area. Have to thank a uh, PhD student. Let me see, wrong source. There we go. PhD meteorology student from the University of Oklahoma, Addison Alford, and a team of scientists and meteorologists that are going to be heading through toward Florence in the next couple of days. They're taking a lot of meteorological equipment with them, including uh, mobile radar, surface observation equipment, and weather balloon launches. They're going to be heading into that area where the hurricane is going to be making landfall. Now, hopefully that means they're going to be just outside that particular area and playing it safe. Storm chasing should only be done by experts. And again, you should not ever storm chase unless you have been trained by experts. That's the way it is. So these guys know what they're doing. And this is not something to emulate to say, hey, let's just go chase this thing and set up inside where the hurricane's supposed to make landfall. Not a good idea. If you don't know what you're doing, you could get yourself or a lot of other people killed. So safety first and safety always on that. Uh, Joseph Boyd Sr., will it affect Memphis? The one in the Gulf, possibly. Again, too early to tell right now. Uh, Florence does not look to be a threat or any effect here on the Mid-South area. So good news on that. We're letting you know about the potential of that storm just because we are the station that's on your side and we want you to be informed about what's going on out there. So again, that's why we're updating you on this. Anyway, the reason I mentioned this, Addison Alford and his colleagues are in Memphis tonight, passing through, heading to the area around the hurricane strike zone. So good luck to them. Wishing them a safe journey. Hope they had a chance to stop by and get some barbecue for tonight. Uh, thanking them for the heads up. And we'll be following. You can get to their live stream, watching what goes on with their vehicles and everything else. Head to my social media pages, especially on Twitter and on Facebook, and you can watch what goes on on their live streams as they get closer to the time as Florence makes its way toward the coastal state. So again, thank you, Mr. Alford and everybody from the Oklahoma uh, uh, Meteorology and science department keeping an eye on this and watching what goes on. And as a fellow coffee addict, I feel some kindred spirits going on there. So thank you very much uh, for that one. Taking a look around the area of Bartlett about a week or so ago, Warren Zimmer, some damage from some of the storms that came through that location earlier. Scott Jarvis, thank you for a very nice sunset from Banner, Mississippi just a few days ago. And Ronnie Mashburn Schwantz, a nice view of a double rainbow from around Mariana, Arkansas. Thank you for that one. And just last night and this morning, picking up some pretty heavy amounts of rainfall, the rain gauge from Warren, Tennessee, Mike Kuntz picking up about five inches plus of rain in about the last 36 hours. So thank you, Mr. Kuntz, for that one from around the Warren area. If you've got weather pictures, we would love to see them. So again, we're going to be seeing the possibility of some uh, dry weather for a while, but not seeing a great deal of it. So whatever you've got in the way of weather pictures, rain gauges, weather shots from around the Mid-South, sunrise, sunset, please tweet them to me, and we'd love to see them on here so I can post them for everybody else. Uh, let's see, where'd that go? Ben Mount, could we give a better timetable on the storm that's heading into uh, the Caribbean? If you're talking about Isaac uh, at this point, it's really difficult to give a view on Isaac and what's going to be happening that far out because Isaac, again, in the next few days, many different for instance, scenarios could happen. The models greatly differ after a period of time, and it's only over the next few days. This is only a few days out for this particular forecast. As you can see, we have this set through about Tuesday. So we're going to have to monitor this over the next few days because the possibilities spread out from this point. So it's going to be difficult to say, again, what exactly happens with Isaac immediately right now. 
now, but over the next few days, we'll be watching that very carefully. Now, the other storm that we're watching, again, that's in the Caribbean right now, well, I guess I can't pan back over there, sorry about that. That particular storm right there, kind of wandering at this point, no real direction at this time, but again, if it heads north into the Gulf, that's where we could see some more problems with that particular cell going on through. So something to consider, and we'll keep you updated on that. Catch my forecast throughout the rest of the weekend on Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. That's something we're going to be watching again very carefully throughout the rest of the next couple of days, so stick around again uh, for more on that. And then also you can pick up my forecast tomorrow morning bright and early with Bob and Josh on Talkback Live. And you can find out more again by listening into AM 730, Yahoo Sports Radio, Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. And of course, if you can't catch them on air because you're out of the area, catch them online at talkbacklivenetwork.org. All right, one last check. School bus forecast for tomorrow. Temperatures back in the lower 60s, starting things off, even some 50s out there, and mid to upper 70s as we head into around the course of the rest of the area. So we could see, again, some pretty warm conditions by the time school is over with, but at least the kids are not going to need the rain protection out there for the rest of the area coming up into tomorrow. We'll have a quick check of weather where the troops are coming up at about 8.45 tonight on my Facebook page, so stay tuned for more on that. Todd Demers will have an update on your forecast bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak, and of course we'll be keeping a very close look at the tropics as we go throughout the course of the rest of the day and through the rest of the week, so definitely want to stay tuned for those updates, and again, if you're planning on heading anywhere to the East Coast in the next few days, Definitely want to be informed about what's going on and be very flexible about your plans to watch what happens. And, of course, we'll be looking forward to more information from the University of Oklahoma weather team as they head that direction. Good luck and safe travels to them. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us for tonight's edition of Weather Overtime. And stick around for a lot more with News Channel 3 on air and online at wreg.com weather.